we are in the middle of, actually not in the middle of, today we are finally going to wrap up our series called Keeping It Real. Now we've talked about, uh, let's see, parenting, we've talked about spousing, and we've talked about believing. This morning we're going to talk about a new topic that we have not talked about yet. And you see, this series is all about making sure that the, the, the things that we do, especially religious things, are all done for the right reason, right? That they're authentic, that they're from the heart, that they're real, that they're done in spirit and in truth with the right motivations. And so God placed it on my heart to talk to you this morning about a topic that I feel has to be talked about in, in, these, in the context of being authentic and from the heart. And that topic is giving, right? Stewardship, uh, donating money to the church, supporting the work of God and his kingdom through supporting the church that we belong to. And when, when, we, when we do this, right, it's got to be from the heart. It's got to be authentic, right? It's got to be in spirit and truth. Therefore, it matches up with our slogan, right? Slogan, I invite you to say with me, keeping it real, it's about the heart, not about playing the part, all right? So now we're going to hit the book. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. So if you brought your personal Bible from home, I want to invite you to open it up to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. If you have a smartphone with a Bible app, punch up 2 Corinthians chapter 8. If you're at home watching on the live stream, you got no excuse. Grab your personal Bible, open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And if you're still looking for it, uh, it's easy to find. It's right after 1 Corinthians chapter 8, which is right after chapter 7. You got it. All right. Good. I love that joke. And we're going to be at, uh, at verse 10. And uh, 2 Corinthians is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. There's a church that he planted, and then he left to plant some more churches. And now he's writing a letter back to that church. So these are believers that he's talking to. And specifically, they are believers who have just made a very generous gift to the Lord. And so here's what he has to say to them, starting in this is 2 Corinthians chapter 8. If you've got your Bible in front of you, I'm going to start about halfway through verse 10. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now, finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. So the first thing that leaps off for you is the fact that not everyone's going to give the same, right? People with more means are going to give more. People with less means are going to give less. It's not about the amount. It's not about playing the part. It's about the heart, right? I want to highlight for you three words in this passage, three words that I, I want to just have you notice, desire, eager, and willingness. These are heart words, right? These tell us that, that this is, giving is got to be from the heart. It's not about playing the part. Therefore, the slogan again, keeping it real, it's about the heart, not about playing the part. As forgiven sinners, we don't give because we have to. We give because we want to. So uh, let's talk about specifically what are uh, good reasons to give and what are some bad reasons to give. And let's, let's talk about the bad ones first. Let's talk about reasons that are not real, that are not authentic, and yet still people give for these reasons. But the first one, here we'll put it on the screens, first one is to give out of guilt. And uh, you know, this, this, is, this is something a lot of people, unfortunately, give out of guilt. It is not a good thing. And there's a lot of people who try to get you to give out of guilt. There's a lot of pastors who will try to get you to give out of guilt. And, you know, it, it starts from a good place. It starts from the right place, which is the Bible, where the biblical definition of giving is called tithing. And tithe stands for tenth. So the biblical command is for us to give 10% of our income. And uh, that, that's the law, right? And now there are, there are some people in this room 
I know who give 10% or maybe more. And then there's other people in the room who might be thinking, 10%? Are you kidding me? There's no way. How could I ever give 10% of my income? That seems like an extraordinarily large amount of money. How could I ever even begin to give that anywhere near that amount of money, right? And so uh, we're struck with guilt. Like, uh, God wants this. He's asking me to give 10%. How could I possibly? In fact, some people who do give 10%, right? And I know I've talked to people and I felt this myself at times where we, we start to think, well, you know, I, geez, I give 10%. I still don't feel like I'm really honoring God with my money. I still feel like there's, there's, uh, there's work to be done, right? Because the law convicts and that's a good thing. The law does make us feel guilty, but we have, we have not measured up. It points out where we're broken. The thing is, God doesn't want us to feel guilt for more than the one second it takes to understand that we don't measure up, that we're broken, right? So the wrong response to feeling guilt, the wrong response to feeling broken and understanding that I'm sinful, the wrong response is to give money, to give out of guilt, to make myself feel better. That is wrong. Here's the right response to the guilt. Repentance. Saying, God, I, I, I can't measure up. I, 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 I don't honor you with my money as much as I, as I, as I know I, I should. And, and, I'm, and I'm, this is very difficult for me. And I, 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 can't, I can't do it most of the time. And I, therefore, Lord, I'm going to need you. I'm going to need your forgiveness. I'm going to need your grace. I understand that there's no way I can, I can possibly please you with how I use my money, and I'm going to need the forgiveness that your son Jesus won for me on the cross. And, and so when we do that, then the floodgates of heaven immediately open up, and God showers us with his forgiveness and his love and his unconditional acceptance and reminds us of this promise that you are saved because of your faith in Christ and your faith in Christ alone. And how much you give to the church has nothing to do with it. That's good news, right? And it's the opposite of guilt, right? So let's now talk about a, another wrong reason to give. Don't give because you have to. And this sounds similar to the guilt, but it's a little bit different. Maybe there's something, somebody who's told you you have to give. Maybe, um, you know, maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's... Um, you know, maybe it's a pastor, maybe it's just society or whatnot that you have, uh, that you have to give. And, you know, this comes, from a, this comes from a good place also. It starts in a good place. Because the truth is that we all have a responsibility to give as members of St. John, right? When you join a church or when you call a church your home, because I know that there's people here at St. John who never become members, right? And maybe you worship with us every Sunday. Some of these people are the most wonderful people who worship every Sunday for years and never become members, right? But it's your home church. And we have a responsibility then to support the church and pay the, the light bill and pay the cleaning bill and play, pay the, you know, the, the, the bills that need to get paid. We all have a responsibility to contribute. But if we give only because we have to. If we give just because we're playing a part, just because we feel like we have a responsibility to give, well, then we're just playing a part. It's the wrong reason to give. Here's another wrong reason to give, inauthentic. Because somebody says we have to, right? And this, uh, um, th th again, this might be, this is very similar to the other ones, but if somebody tells you you have to give, um, wrong reason to give. The next one, giving so that we can feel better about ourselves. And, and this, is, this is because, and have you ever done this because I have, right? It's very easy to do, right, as believers. You walk into church on Sunday morning and you're feeling pretty good about yourself because you just made a donation. Maybe you've got a donation in your pocket that you're going to put in the offering plate and you're feeling good about that. And that's, not that that's a bad thing, but when we walk in and thinking, you know, okay, I feel good about myself that I'm, I've come to church because I brought an offering. That is the wrong reason to come to church. It's the wrong reason to, to give uh, an offering because it, it, it becomes self-righteous, right? 
And the truth is, you should feel good about coming to church whether you come with money or not, right? Someone who brings nothing ever should still feel welcome and valued and important and good about coming to church, right? So let's make sure that we don't give for that reason. And here's another wrong reason, inauthentic reason to give, because we want to look good to others. Uh, a long time ago, this is a true story, a long time ago, it was long before I met Jen, I was dating this girl and she took me to her church. And I remember that as soon as you walked in, in the lobby, there was this giant bulletin board, and on the bulletin board were all the monthly bills for the church, right? So there was the, the gas bill and the light bill and the bill for, you know, cleaning and the the bill for the pastor's health insurance and all these bills that had to be paid. And then hanging down in front of the bulletin board was a great big red magic marker on a string. And you were supposed to take the marker and write your name on the bill that you were going to pay. Right? True story. And uh, so it, it worked. The bills all got paid. But it, was, it also turned everything inside out because people would take their names and they would write their name in big red letters on a bill. Like, look at me, I'm paying this bill. Oh, look at me, I'm going to pay the bigger bill. Right? And it, it became a competition. It became something where people did it to look good. And then the people who couldn't afford to pay any of these bills, then they looked bad. And then the, 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 the guilt was kind of left hanging on them. And so this was a bad idea. I'm glad that it didn't work out between me and that girl. Uh, can you imagine? Okay, and the, uh, and the next one uh, here. Because giving makes us feel like we have the right to control something at church. Now, I know that nobody here at St. John would ever do this, but at some churches, right, there will be people who uh, give, and then they'll say things like, Pastor, you know, we pay your salary. Or, uh, you know, I give a lot of money at this church. Things should be the way I want them to be. Right? And that's just a really bad attitude. Uh, I mean, we're all in this together. We give our money from the heart, generously for the work of the Lord, not so that we can control something at church, right? Okay, now let's look at some good reasons, good motivations to give from the heart. Right? The first one, because, giving because we want to. Because we want to. Because I, I want to. Right? Let's expand on that. Giving because we want to support our church, because we see all the great things that our church does, and the people who are helped, and the way the kingdom is advanced at our church. We were here last week, and we had 37 new members, and we had, we had that one family where dad and the two, two, two kids were baptized, and there was another family, by the way, another family uh, was, was joining part of that group but they were not able to be here uh, last week, and they have two kids who are also going to be baptized in the next couple of weeks. We're, we're, so we, we would have had five, in that group, there's five baptisms. That's huge. And, and all these, these new members joining our church, why? Well, because the gospel is clearly proclaimed, and they heard it, and they fell in love with Jesus, and because it's a Bible-based church, and because Christ is lifted up here, and because we have great programs for families and children, and because we have these awesome Bible studies, so many to choose from on Sunday mornings between services, and we've got these you know, small groups that happen during the week, and because we do so many things to help needy people in the community, and because we're constantly reaching out into the community to share with people the love of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, and people want to be part of that. Not just the new members, but everybody, right? We love this church, and we love everything that's going on at this church. And we see God is at work, and we say, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. I want to, I want to use my time. I want to use my talents. I want to use my abilities. I want to use my energy. And I want to support it with my money as well. Because I believe in what's happening at this church. That's, that's a good reason to give. All right, next good reason to give because it's a way of saying, God, I trust you with this money. I want my faith in you and my trust in your promises to grow, and I know they will if I give you this money. And, and this, is, this, is a, this, is a, uh, this is an advanced thing to grasp, but God has made you a promise. He has promised to always take care of you. 
today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. God is always going to provide for you. He's always going to protect you. He's always going to be there for you. And therefore, we don't have to hoard money, right? Now, we can save money. There's nothing wrong with saving for retirement or something else that you're, you know, saving for. Not wrong to save. But the point is that we don't have to hoard money because we know our future is taken care of. And therefore, today, we can be generous and we, we don't have to hoard the money. But see, God has also given an, you another promise. And this one, this one is, this one's really heavy. He has promised, get this, that you will be better off if you give that money than if you hold on to it. Now that makes no sense, does it? That makes absolutely no sense from a worldly human standpoint. It makes no logical sense. Of course I'm going to be better off with the money than if I give it away, right? But no, God is saying, actually, trust me. I've got your back. I'm God. I know how this works. Trust me, if you give to to my work, if you give to support my kingdom, you will actually be better off in the future than if you don't. And that's a promise. And that, so therefore, if we, if we trust in that promise, if we trust in both of those promises and we give in trust, then that trust is going to grow, right? And I see a number of you nodding your heads because you know from experience, because you have been giving and you give and you've seen it come back to you, not necessarily financially. Sometimes it comes back financially. But what God is talking about is that as a, as a whole person, your life will be better because it'll be, he's going to take care of you, right? And you will be blessed through the giving. And then so your faith grows and your trust in him grows. And that's what it's all about, right? This is a great time. It's a great way to grow your faith. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see when you give for all the good reasons, then it's with desire, eagerness, and willingness. Now, if, as I've been talking, especially when I was talking about the wrong reasons to give, if that struck a nerve, right? If you started to think, wow, you know, I, I, I think I've been giving for all the wrong reasons. I want you to stop giving. Wait, what? <laughs> Did the pastor just say stop giving? Yeah, because if you're giving for the wrong reasons, I want you to stop Hold on to your money because I, I, don't, I don't want your money. I'm your pastor. I care about your heart. I care that you're giving for the right reason, that your heart is in the right place. So if it's not, if you're not giving for the right reason, then stop. Take a step back. Repent. And work this out with God. And it, it, is, it is far better to just stop and say, God, I, I need... I need to retrench here. I need to get my heart in the right place. And God will do that. The Holy Spirit will get your heart in the right place. And I don't know if it takes a week, a month, a year, 25 years. I don't care. Because uh, don't worry, there's plenty of wonderful, generous givers who are giving from the heart here at St. John. I'm not worried about St. John. God's going to provide, right? What I care about is your heart and, um, and your heart being in the right place. I care about being, us being joyful. I'm going to close with one last piece of scripture. This is Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. It's in the, uh, it's in the Sermon on the Mount. And it's the words of Jesus. He says, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. That that small gate, that narrow road, is Jesus. And it is only through repentance on this issue and in every issue in our lives that gets us on that road. 
the vast majority of people are on that wide road. They think the way to make God happy is through what they're doing, how much money they're giving to be a good person. And yeah, we want to be good people, but we want it to come through our heart and we want it to come through our faith in Jesus. We don't want to just be playing a part, walking down a broad road. The narrow path is the heart. So I'm going to invite you to stand now. Let's stand and let's say the slogan one last time because we're done with this series. The last time I'll make you say it. Here we go. Keeping it real. It's about the heart, not about playing the part. Amen.